It's with great pleasure that we're able to introduce to you the SIGGRAPH 95 keynote speaker, Steve Jobs. As many of you know, Steve co-founded and was uh, chairman of Apple Computer. He led Apple to become a $2 billion company, during which time he co-designed the Apple II and led the development, marketing, and manufacturing of the Macintosh, laser writer, Macintosh and LaserWriter printer. Steve also co-founded and currently serves as chairman and CEO of Next Computer. Steve attended Reed College in my hometown, Portland, Oregon. He went on to receive the National Technology Medal from President Reagan in 1985 in recognition of his pioneering work in technology, and in 1989 was named Entrepreneur of the Decade by Inc. Magazine. About 10 years ago, Steve purchased the Lucasfilm Computer Graphics Research Group from George Lucas and spun it off into an independent company we know today as Pixar. Steve serves as chairman and CEO of Pixar today as well. In 1988, Pixar won the Best Animated Short Academy Award for Tin Toy, the first time a computer animated film was awarded with an Oscar. Pixar, together with Walt Disney Company, is currently in production on the first ever completely computer generated feature length film in history, which is called Toy Story and it will come to life this Thanksgiving. Please give a warm welcome to Steve Jobs. There's going to be a test on that last stuff after this keynote. Can we? Okay, great. Um, I'm really uh, privileged to be here this morning, and my colleagues and I feel uh, really special to be able to talk to you today um, about some really exciting stuff. I want to talk about three things today. Uh, the first one is the centenary. Second one is scale and complexity. And the third is a place in history. Let's start with the first one. As I was doing some research uh, for today, I discovered a really startling fact that is all the more relevant since computer graphics is making major contributions to the motion picture industry and seems quite appropriate since we are in Los Angeles, which is the worldwide center for motion pictures. And that fact was that this year is the 100th anniversary, the centenary year, of the first motion picture. The first motion picture was shown in 1895. It was uh, created by two brothers, Antoine and Louis Lumiere, and it was projected in, uh, below the Grand Café in Paris, France, 100 years ago, December 28, 1895. So we are at the centenary of this incredible invention. Now, what I'd like to do is examine how technology has influenced the motion picture since that time. How has the incorporation of technology progressed and how has it changed the way we view motion pictures? Well, the invention of the motion picture was an amazing feat of technology. The Lumiere brothers invented their own cameras, their own projectors. We went along for almost 40 years before we saw the next major technological in innovation, which was sound. In 1927, the jazz singer premiered, starring Al Jolson. It was mostly a silent picture with a few songs, but in it, Al Jolson spoke several lines, and with those lines, ended the era of silent pictures forever. As a measure of how revolutionary this was, U.S. movie attendance went from 60 million persons in 1927, when the jazz singer premiered, to 110 million persons in 1929. Incidentally, um, the jazz singer was immensely popular and saved the studio that produced it, which was on the verge of bankruptcy, and that studio was Warner Brothers. If Warner Brothers had not taken a major gamble on new technology, there would be no Time Warner today. The next major incorporation of technology was in 1932. In 1932, Technicolor had perfected their three-strip color film process after having had many problems with some earlier technology. Unfortunately, they could not interest any major studio at that time in making a color film. Can you believe that? 
Uh, the studios treated it as a outrageously risky expense and refused to pony up the money to make color films. There was only one studio at the time that decided to go for it, and that was Walt Disney. And Walt Disney trained their animators in color theory and produced the first color films, the Silly Symphony cartoons, which won several Academy Awards and ushered in the age of color. The next major breakthrough was in 1937 with Snow White, the world's first animated feature film produced by Walt Disney. It incorporated many innovations, including the multiplane camera, and really was the first new form of motion picture entertainment since the invention of the motion picture itself some 42 years earlier. Animation would never be the same again, and Disney's led the way since then. The next innovation was two years later. While there were a half a dozen live action films which incorporated Technicolor before The Wizard of Oz, none of them were either commercially successful nor did they ignite the public's demand for color. The Wizard of Oz changed all that and became the icon of bringing color into live action films. We then progress almost 40 years before the next major incorporation of new technology, which was Star Wars in 1977. Star Wars not only totally redefined the science fiction motion picture film genre, but it also elevated special effects to become an equal partner to live action in storytelling and motion pictures. Now, although Star Wars' effects were produced pre-computer graphics, they really opened the door for everything that followed, and we are still living in their shadow today. We then progress a little over a decade to Terminator 2. Although Terminator 2 was the first film to bring computer graphics special effects into the mainstream, although there were a few films to incorporate computer graphics special effects, like Alien and the Abyss before Terminator 2, Terminator 2 was what captured the public and elevated special computer graphics special effects to the mainstream. This was followed two years later by Jurassic Park, which carried the art a little further and created the most commercially successful film of all time because of the computer graphics special effects. And that brings us to 1995. In 1995, the centenary year of the invention of the motion picture itself, we have another major milestone, something I think will go down as a landmark in motion picture history, and that is the first completely computer-generated feature-length motion picture, completely computer-synthetic, on the 100th anniversary of the motion picture itself, and that, of course, is Toy Story. Toy Story represents the computer graphics community contributing not just special effects to a motion picture, but the entire motion picture itself. It's a breakthrough on the scale of Technicolor, Snow White, and Star Wars. It is way beyond what we've seen in computer graphics special effects. Uh, without diminishing Jurassic Park in any way, let me illustrate. If you take Jurassic Park and stack all of the frames that contain any computer synthetic element back to back, you get about five and a half minutes. Of course, these frames do not include background sets or anything, usually just a, one computer synthetic element. Toy Story is 79 minutes in length, and every frame is totally synthetic. Major, minor characters, background sets, etc. An order of magnitude leap. And again, most importantly, we see computer graphics not just playing a supporting role to live action, but actually providing the entire vision for the motion picture. Now, I know a lot of you have seen Toy Story, a clip in the film show. I have that clip here today on film if you'd like to see it again. Would you like to see it or would you like to skip it? Okay, great. Well, I'd love to show it. So can we get the lights down and show the first clip? Sergeant, 
Establish your recon post downstairs. Code red. You know what to do. Yes, sir. All right, men. You heard it. Code red. Repeat. We are at code red. Recon plan Charlie. Execute. Let's move. Move, 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 move. How we find out what is in those presents. Oh, what in the world? Oh, I thought I told him to pick these up. Shouldn't they be there by now? What's taking them so long? Hey, these guys are professionals. They're the best. Come on, I'm not lying down on the job. Just go. A good soldier never leaves a man behind. Mrs. Potato Head. Hey, I can drink, can I? The boat's coming off. He's ripping the wrapping paper. It's a, it's, it's a lunchbox. We've got a lunchbox here. A lunchbox? A lunchbox? Lunch. Uh. Okay, second present. It appears to be, okay, it's bed sheets. Who invited that kid? Oh, only one left. Okay, we're on the last present now. Last present! It's a big one. It's a, it's a board game. Repeat, Battleship. Yeah. Hey, watch it. Sorry, there, old Spudhead. Mission accomplished. Well done, man. Pack it up. 